Good afternoon everybody, it's me Crafty Witch and welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a flip through of this book of shadows. This is my second or third time trying to do this. Um, I've done this before but then it flipped the video sideways so yeah I don't know what happened there. But anyway this is my dragon book of shadows. Sorry for the wobbly camera work. I've got this tripod balanced on two boxes and about four or five different books so it's like oh my goodness I hope it doesn't fall but anyway um I decided to go with the junk journal style of book of shadows I think about a year and a half two years ago a year ago something like that my other five inch three ring binder book of shadows I'd filled that up and I wanted to do something more playful so then um I found a old Lady Gaga concert book and I decided to use that. I think this is 10 inches by 13. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, after the video I'll post the, the measurements down below. But I literally went to the thrift store, found a nice hardcover book that I thought would be great. I decorated the inside. I gessoed a lot of the pages. I glued in stuff. I made pockets. That kind of thing. Um, in the end... It was very kind of uh, whimsical and it was kind of fun in that aspect. What I don't like about it is that it's it's not organized. <laughs> you know, it's like random bits of information here and there throughout the whole entire book. Whereas with my uh, binder style of Book of Shadows or even with a post bond or post style book of shadows with the little posts that they have post bound I think they're called um you can at least move information around whereas with this it's once it's in it's pretty much stuck there unless you rip out that page or glue something over top of it or paint it or whatnot I just sewed a lot of the pages and um made pockets and fold out pages and that kind of thing um and it, it really bulked it up and in doing so and I did rip out a lot of pages as well I ended up breaking the spine of the book which you will see here it's being held together with Gorilla Tape and you'll see some Gorilla Tape on the inside as well as some clear packing tape I am not a bookmaker as I've discovered and oopsie and um, yeah but it was it was fun to try something new I do like how the cover turned out I used tissue like the kind you um, when you give a birthday gift to somebody and you have like their gift inside of a, a gift bag and the, the tissue paper that sticks out of the gift bag that's what I used on the cover as well as Mod Podge and I just kind of crinkled up the tissue and glued it down and then I Put a couple coats of Mod Podge on it once it had dried and then I went over that with some gold um, paint and green and black paint as well so that's that and then also when I built up the eye lid area of the dragon's eye I made sure that I used the tissue paper to go over the top and the bottom parts of the black stone to keep that in place in case the the glue ever let go so that's that so it says a witch's book of dreams for the well-read witch there's a pocket here it's the laser cut out of a star that i liked here is some of that beautiful clear packing tape so i just talk about some stuff in here here's a pocket then a, a little memory there um of my first it was my first magical memory I was about three, four years old, and uh, it was actually a ceremony that my grandfather was doing at um, their place, so it was nice. Here's a book blessing that I've done. Uh, it says, this grimoire has been crafted by my own hand. This grimoire is for my descendants, every child, woman, and man. Blessed these pages shall ever be, knowledge passed down through eternity. As you each learn and grow in your own way, call upon our ancestral line every time you pray. Fear not as you work your magic, knowledge is power, ignorance is tragic. For those who are out of 
who are not of my line and by happenstance find the sacred book of mine, return it to its rightful heir and your life will be without mishap or care. If by chance my family line has come to an end, then I humbly ask of thee to carry on my life's work, my legacy. Then I signed it with my name. And this Lady Gaga had dedicated her concert book to Little Monsters, and I like that. So I did put some gesso on this page and just a light cover of it. And a friend of mine had given me this Stay Weird sticker, which I love. It's got some ravens on there, so I put that there as well. Now, um, here I've written in pen. What I've noticed by writing with a ballpoint pen is sometimes it would scratch the gesso off and because the pages are like super glossy, um, sometimes the pen wouldn't write properly if it's scratched off the gesso. So I resorted to trying different kinds of markers and gel pens and you name it, I've pretty much tried it. So here I talk about my grandfather, I talk about um, different folks and how the medicines came to be in our family. These are some uh, divination cards I got from the Witch's Moon subscription box when I used to subscribe to it. This is a little bookmark I made when, I'm not sure if you can see that, if it's going to focus. That's my middle son when he was in Sea Cadets. I think he was only about 10 years old there. That was many, many years ago. He's all grown up now. And um, here are some Salvin cards that a friend of mine had been given or had given to me and um, just different cards and things like that. I also used to subscribe to another subscription box by Magic and Macabre and they are on Etsy and they used to do like a monthly subscription subscription box I think for about $50 Canadian somewhere in there and this is one of the um, things that they had sent. So with these little pockets I've got different um, incense recipes, different things I've written. I've also got another little pocket here and there's some parchment paper and stuff that's written on there. Talk about my parents, living your truth, walking your talk and other stuff. Uh, Holy Mother Goddess, Holy Father God and I just talk about their their attributes, their my experiences, that kind of thing. Here I talk about um, owl medicine and uh, my family's connection to owls, particularly the, the large white owls. And uh, over here on the tree branch, I am no artist, by the way. <laughs> Just letting you guys know that. So if you see funky little drawings and, and <laughs> whatnot, just please be kind. Um, I am, I'm not a, uh, I, I don't do well when it comes to drawing. So over here on the, the trunk of the tree and on the branch, I talk about different um, goddesses and uh, different forms of divinity that um, are linked with owls. And I talked about different types of owls here and kind of like the um, legends and, and things like that. And then I've got a little owl laser cut out here that I attached some ribbon to, uh, ribbon rather, and um, use this as a bookmark and it has its own little pocket right there. Here I talk about different ancestral work and these pens I believe were gel pens and they were horrible to write on gesso. Um, they would scratch off the gesso like I don't know if you can see that on here um, but I went over that with black marker because they would it, they would cut right through the gesso. Maybe I just write too hard. I don't know. But the ballpoint, because they're so pointy, they would like cut right through the gesso and then hit the, the paper underneath, which was super glossy. And it just, yeah, it wasn't very good. And then um, I've got two memorial cards there of my grandparents, my Kukum and my Mushum. So Mushum means grandfather in Cree and Kukum means grandmother. So then I just talk about um, some stuff there. Here I talk about blood magic. Um, what I liked about Lady Gaga is she had some really cool um, 
photographs here in her book. So this one she's standing, it looks like in a shower or bathtub. You can kind of see her feet here and like, um, like there's blood spilling into this tub here. Um, she was painted in blood and I don't know, I think there's some pictures of it somewhere in here. Hopefully I didn't paint over it. Um, but I really thought that this would be really appropriate for talking about blood magic. So I'd talk about um, different forms of blood magic and how you can incorporate that into your practice. And I carry that on here. Here I talk about graveyard dirt, how to use it, um, how to acquire it, and um, that kind of thing. So that's, this is like... <laughs> <laughs> trying to draw a coffin here and here's the grass you know up top yeah here is just some more pockets there's another hidden pocket in here as well I talk about fire magic here's another pocket um, again I had a bit of a time and just tried using different markers I found the markers worked easiest on the gesso however they were really bulky right so they did take up a lot of space and here is just uh, the goddess of a sp goddess of spring, kind of a little prayer to her. I had painted this, and then I didn't, wanted to preserve it so that um, it wouldn't flake off, because I noticed that in some places it would flake off. So then I sealed it with. Sorry, I keep hitting this tripod somehow, um, but I had sealed it with Mod Podge. And by doing so, um, it always feels like it's sticking together. So sometimes I'll put a piece of paper in here. Here's a spell to slow down time. Here I talk about different forms of allies. I've used artwork from different calendars that I had collected over time as well. So here I talk about um, different allies. Or allies so different like little people and nature spirits that kind of thing and then I go on to different experiences here that I've had or that my family have had with little people here is a uh, I had gotten coffin nails in one of my subscriptions and um, they had sent this information on coffin nails so I included that plus I included directions here on how to create your own coffin nails Someday I'll do a video on that. This was from Lillowin's, um or Llewellyn's Witches Calendar. I've been collecting those calendars since like 1995. And um, they just sat on my bookshelf forever. So I decided to incorporate some of the artwork into here, which I really do like. And then uh, this particular printout here came from... I believe it was the Witch's Moon Box subscription. So I put it in here because I wanted to use it. I didn't want it just sitting on a shelf somewhere. Um, here is uh, connecting to the primal goddess and to your ancestors. So it's just a bit of a ritual here. And it also incorporates blood magic. Here is a bit of a... I just talk about an experience I've had with uh, dragon magic. More little pockets, um, other things I've written. So I tend to do readings, uh, yearly readings during Samhain. So I like to save them and keep them. So I'll store them in my Book of Shadows. So that's that is there. And then just some more information within the pockets. And then here's another um, spell. I don't know where the sticker came from, but I like it. It's like a little otter and it says, you can be a mess today. It's okay. So I, I liked it. I thought it was cute. Kind of matches this side. So it just reminds me to um, not always take things so seriously. It's okay to, um, you know, kind of be playful and you don't need to be perfect. So there's different pockets here. There's another pocket in here where I've got different information, that kind of thing. Um, then I talk about some more dragon magic, primordial type magic. 
I've got mango powder in here, cat's claw bark and powder, um, different chants and things. Here I included the code. Uh, if you watched uh, the one video I have on how I store my herbs and stuff, um, I have these glass jars. Actually, I can grab one behind me and I'll show you, for instance. Daisy. So here is a jar of elderflowers. So I've got these different symbols here. And what I find really handy is I can look at my shelf and I can see all the different herbs I have, but I can look at the, the symbols and I'll know automatically, ah, okay, this is good for healing. This is good for fairy magic. You know, this is good for protection. And it's also good for courage and strength. So I included the little legend I have here for all the different symbols that I use for my herbs and my plant materials. And then I included them in here so in case I ever forgot, I can just come in here and go, oh, okay, the three crosses represent ancestral work or working with the dead. The, you know, three little Zs or whatever um, represent dream magic. This represents, the little hammer represents court legal injustice. The little owl eyes down here represent wisdom. This represents fertility. So I just find it handy like that. I'm a very visual person, so that's what I like to do. And I just incorporated that in here. Here I have um, how to banish somebody from your life permanently. Uh, it works well, but when you do, when you do uh, use this spell, um, it really does get rid of them from your life permanently. This one um, is a spell that I included in here for my descendants, my family to summon me after I pass away. This is my handprint right here. Um, they're to put their hand there and then they say the, the chant. And then here's, um, see this turned out so horribly. I painted it. I love the colors and everything. And uh, I tried using gel pens and different types of markers. It was just, it was bad. In the end, I switched to just black marker. Um, yeah. That's probably the reason why I don't think I'm ever going to have um, this style of uh, grimoire again. It's just, it was very disappointing. <laughs> it was very frustrating too. So here's some more pockets. That I have that's a little painting that a friend of mine had made and given to me so I just keep it here this is my pendulum board page the flip up page up here so I like using this um, with a pendulum if I need to it's handy having it right in the book of shadows um, ancestral stuff again this was from the witch's moon box so that was neat here i talk about familiars and um this is a piece of artwork i got from one of my calendars it was a celtic calendar i really liked it, it had the three cats so it's a flip open page ah the love of my life who died so i will probably do a video on that after so here I talk about death omens, um, my experience uh, with different uh, death omens and that kind of thing, as well as some that are common to uh, our family and whatnot. And then here's another flip open page. I ended up using a lot of these metallic markers in the end and um, while they're pretty and everything, they take up so much space because they're so thick, right? So kind of didn't like that. This page I stained with like tea and was able to use just a regular uh, pen on that. Um, I talk about divination here, incense, gratitude, uh, croning, my experience with croning and that kind of thing. Here, talk about Samhain. I got this picture from Llewellyn's Witch's Calendar, one of them. I've been collecting them since like 19, I don't know, 95, 96, somewhere in there. So I just used one of their 
one of their pictures. Here's another pocket. And yeah, so I just talk about different things here. I talk about them. Um, talk about wands here. This was another printout from the Witches subscription box. Every month they would send something, right? Something like this. And, you know, I don't want to throw them out. I want to keep them. I want it to be useful. I don't want it just kind of tucked away somewhere where you never see it. So then I put them in my book of shadows. And then a second sight spell. Here I talk about the goddess. Here's another printout of the triple goddess. Um, this page I left, this was part of uh, her concert book and I liked it. It kind of reminded me of either ice or like um, angel wings. So then I just included this little prayer that says angels of mine across space and time protect mine and me from all forms of negativity. And then talk about some more experiences I've had. Um, those animal dreams I talked about a few months back. Here I talk about Manitou Lake by Watcher, Saskatchewan, Canada and um, the healing properties of that lake. It's known in other parts of the world. I mean there's always people coming from like Germany and uh, Japan and other places like that that actually come here um, for that lake. It's known as the Dead Sea of Canada and uh, like the Dead Sea, you, like you can't sink. Um, you can literally go and stand straight as a pencil and not move your arms and legs and the water holds you up. You do not sink. It, it's the wildest thing ever. It's pretty cool. So I just talked about um, different legends about that. Here I'm talking about muskeg tea. Or, wait, here's muskeg tea. What's this? Um, yeah, I just, some reflection on some dreams. So when I done the video about, um, preserving plants and, and stuff like that, I discovered you can laminate them. And, um, I really, really, really like this. I, I think it's pretty cool way to be able to, um, preserve plant material and that kind of thing. So I laminated some muskeg leaves and put them in my book of shadows. Feather magic. So there's all kinds of feathers and different ways you can use them. So you can use them um, as talismans and fans and in sachets, cool pens. Whoa! You went for a bit of a cruise there. <laughs> I'll hold this. So I'll do a video on feather magic. And then here I talk about the different types of feathers. So there's eagle feathers, hawk feathers, sparrow, raven feathers, crow feathers, swallow feathers, swan feathers, owl feathers, goose feathers, hummingbird feathers, prairie chicken feathers, peacock feathers, crane feathers, you name it. Here are the nine noble virtues of Asatru. Um, I really like them. So I included them into here. Here's a protection symbol. <laughs> so here's the way to go. Now, Hollywood likes uh, to incorporate uh, the legend of the Winnego into a, different uh, TV programs. For instance, there was one in Charmed many years back. And then in Supernatural, there was uh, a Winnego in there as well. So um, this is a drawing. Again, I am no artist, but it's a drawing of one that um, my family has experienced. So that's what it looks like as best as I can get it. Like I said, I am no artist, um, that kind of thing. So I, I talk about the Wendigo here and how it's an in, like it's an entity and um, like I'm Cree and Ojibwe amongst many other things. But uh, the legend has it from what I've been told is that the first Wendigo appeared during a time of famine in the winter time that our people experienced. And the old people always said like, we're never ever supposed to eat snow or ice. And, um, 
how that the first Winnego, how it started was that uh, people were starving. It was winter time. They had not prepared uh, for the winter properly, so they didn't hunt and dry their, their meat and their food. And um, so they started starving. And as such, people were so hungry that they started to eat ice and they started to eat snow. And because of that, they started to, uh, like their lips would go numb because of the snow and the ice. And they actually started chewing on their own lips. And then they started to eat their own lips, which is what I, I was trying to draw that here. How do you draw somebody with no lips when you're not an artist? Um, and try to make this person look like really skinny and and whatnot but um they started to chew around here um so they had no lips and then once um they ate their lips they had that the taste of flesh and blood in their mouth and then the the craving for human flesh uh, came to be and then from that once they started to uh, eat their their own skin around their mouths uh, they became possessed and hungered for human flesh and then they began to kill and eat their families and kin uh, they were considered to be crazy and they grew incredibly tall and strong they became giants who would kill and eat their victims and no matter how much they ate they can never satisfy their evil hunger and the more people that they ate, the taller they would become. Um, some are said to have grown over to be over 15 feet tall. Their hair is usually wild and messy. They have no lips because, well, they ate them. Um, they look very gaunt and they smell like rotting flesh. Their eyes look black. Um, some might look like their eyes are bloodshot. Um, their skin can vary from gray to dark brown. Uh, a person can also become possessed by the Wendigo spirit by being greedy, and then they can be transformed also into one against their will. Uh, there is some bad medicine amongst our people that can force a person to become a Wendigo against their will. Another way a person can be, become a Wendigo is, I, here I talk about the bad medicine, right? Um, once you are turned into a Wendigo, there's basically really no cure. And then I talk about in the winter of 1989-1990, um, an experience that our family had with uh, a Wendigo. There were three people in our family that experienced um, that incident. So it was, it was interesting. And no, it's not like Hollywood movies. It's not like that at all. Um, they are like a spirit entity, but at the same time, they become a physical entity. It's um, kind of between the worlds in some aspects, but they can become extremely powerful and very large. Interesting to note, there are uh, Native Americans with that last name, and it does not mean that they're evil or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. There's that. Here I talk about throwing the bones and what's in my my um, my little kit for that. And then just some more of a reflection. And that's pretty much it right here. And I end it. And then here I've got the little window where it says the little monster diary. That was part of the Lady Gaga book, and I liked it. I kept it, and I just put a little bit of sparkly paper and cut out a window for it. And that is my flip through, and that's it for now. Ciao.